So, I'm going to be honest here. I'm running out of ideas for videos. Um, I started to do one earlier and it didn't feel right. What I've always tried to do is I've always tried to not put my ideas into anything or what I'm going to say maybe in the intro but as far as the scriptures go I might read a couple but just let the spirit lead on these things and I'm getting nothing. The video I tried to do earlier was about the rapture and I'm going through it and it's just like this doesn't feel right at all. It doesn't feel anything like what I usually get and how it usually feels and uh, I did the video and I sat there and I rewatched it and I thought I can even tell by looking at myself that it's not right. Something's not right. So I deleted it and I'm watching other people's videos, Katie and David, um, and we're seeing, everybody's seeing it and everybody's feeling it and it's like, it's the end of the road. It really feels like it. You go outside and you look outside and everything looks great but then you look at the world and what's going on and it's like... You know, right now, uh, Ty Green did a good video. If you guys haven't gone and watched his last video, go watch it. Uh, talking about what's going on in Israel right now. And what they're, the people are talking, or the Jews are talking about, is that they want Netanyahu out. They've wanted him out for a long time. So they're going to get rid of him. And they want to put somebody in place to prepare the way for the Moshiach to come. And... This is somebody that's going to play ball with them. Somebody who's going to strive for peace with Israel, in Israel, and with everyone else, and build the third temple. And the, they keep saying the same name over and over again. A couple months ago, I brought this up. A few other people brought this up. Gideon Sa'ar. And when you dig into this guy, I did in the video that I did, dig into the details about him. There's not a few things that match the description of the Antichrist. He could be the guy. He might just be the one that opens the door for him. I don't know. But what we're seeing right now is unprecedented. Israel has never had this in 70 years. Um, what we see going on naturally in the world never had this. Not even close. Um, governments, not even close. Uh, just people in general, not even close. It is impossible to look at any other time throughout our history, throughout recorded history, and find a time frame that has been this active biblically and... Oh, I was about to do a video on Ephesians 2. <laughs> wow. I don't know if y'all could see that. It was a banner telling me the seal bottle of blood put up a video. Um... I'm still I'm seeing the spirit working in everyone, but you know we have this thing with YouTube blooming, that we may all lose our channels and all that, and just it. It seems like everything just kind of fell off, and I don't know if something's about to happen or what is going on. Can't pinpoint it, um, but I want you guys to know that uh, if y'all ha haven't already seen on the other channels, a, a bunch of us are working together to try to find an alternative where we can, at the very least, we can get together and listen to. Um, podcasts or something of each one of us if we can't do videos of each one of us putting out there putting teachings out there um, I've got all my videos uh, I'm probably gonna start re-uploading them to uh, the most pertinent ones to uh, a different format just to see how it goes so I don't know I don't know where this is gonna go I have no answers on this but I am gonna take it on faith so basically, this would be probably considered, I'm probably going to title this the, the Stigmata 3, Part 3 video. Because uh, I said I was going to do it, and yeah, that's true, he will. Um, because somebody had asked about that, because they're going through something. You know, a lot of us go through pains we can't explain. My connective tissue disease, they can find no cause. <laughs> I have all the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis, but no rheumatoid markers in my blood. I go in there, and they took blood tests while my hands look like softballs. No inflammatory markers in my blood. They can't explain this. Uh, and there's a lot of other people that have injuries and, and pains and stuff and illnesses that can't be explained. And if you watched part two of this, you saw how I uh, had pointed to the different spots where Jesus would have had his... his uh, spikes put... 
and how you can relate that to different pains as as it's associated to that. And when you sit and you think about it and imagine it, it kind of gives you a weird perspective on it. Now, that was my opinion, but there are some scriptures that talk about suffering in Christ's name and suffering for Christ. And guys, I'm just going to share you the scripture because my opinion doesn't matter. Truth is truth. And I'm going to let these scriptures speak to you. Um, you, you do your own research on this. It could be. That could be the different ways of, of suffering like him. Because there's definitely scripture that talks about it. So in Colossians 1.24 it says, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. And in my flesh I am, fill, fill, I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of the body. That is, the church. Uh, we know they suffered a lot back then. But the world is different now. Uh, and over time, that, that kind of stuff has changed. But is it different? There's a lot of different ways to suffer. There's a lot of different ways to be beaten. There's a lot of different ways to go through pain. And, and when I think about this, and I contemplate it, and as we go through scriptures, you may see this. It leads me to believe, or, or brings me to the conclusion of who is his and who isn't. Because he repu reproves and rebukes those that he loves and those that are his to keep us in the right place, to keep us humble. And these kinds of physical pains, it could be a manifestation of that. I hope so, because it sure would explain it. Second Timothy 3.12 Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Now, I've seen this scripture tossed out there so many times by so many different people. Uh, making it out like, like that watch woman on the wall. Making it out like they're the ones that are being persecuted oh what was me you know i'm going through all this stuff well you know when you're lying to people people are going to call you out on that just because somebody tells you you're wrong doesn't mean it's persecution i have people tell me i'm wrong all the time that's not persecution the attacks are when they come at me with, with hatred there's a difference between that stuff but some people just want attention and it's a bad state that i'm seeing a lot of people in. now some of these people are believers we can't see in the heart. We don't know who all it is. Some of these people are believers. They're just on the wrong path. Um, I just started again rereading the first three chapters of Revelation and the letters to the churches. And I can sit there and like tick off the list going, I've seen that, seen that, and all that kind of stuff and how it relates to us. And it's kind of eye-opening. 2 Timothy 2.12, if we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. What do you need to endure? Patience. Patience and endurance through what's going. We already know what's coming at the end of this. We know what's waiting. There's no reason why we should falter. It's hard. It sucks. It's, you know, take time. Take some time off work and go, go away somewhere and relax. And spend a little time with the Lord and get into prayer. If you guys haven't joined me for morning prayer, um, find somebody else who's doing prayer on their channels. I mean, it, it's a good thing to do that together because it builds up the spirit. And I share it so we can glorify God and so we can communicate with Him and, and, and learn something and get something from it as a blessing to my brothers and sisters because we don't do this stuff anymore. It's terrible. But there's, there's a few of us that do it. And let's hang on a little longer. Philippians 129, For it has been granted to you Listen closely to this. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake. Could what we go through, because we all have live different lives and we live in different places. We suffer demonic persecution here. People in other countries suffer physical persecution. It's still persecution. It's still suffering. It's just different forms. Could it be that what we're enduring with our pains especially if they're in very specific places. Could it be that's a manifestation of that? If that's the case, that's a blessing. That's, you were found worthy to suffer for him. That's awesome. Romans 8.18, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. And this is something to keep in mind, as we haven't seen what's waiting for us. That day is coming. And it seems hard, like, well, I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, but the light's right there. We just have to endure a little longer. And that's what he told us to do, endure. Romans eight seventeen. and if children, 
then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may be also glorified with him. Suffering can come in many forms, guys. God is setting us up for success. He's not setting us up for failure. If you have faith, he is putting things in your path that will make you be glorified when you get there. But a lot of people aren't going to experience that because they're throwing it away in lieu of their own desires and lust of the flesh. Um, when I read stuff like this, it's like, if we're if we're with him, if if we're we have faith and we're we're tied with him and co heirs with him, wouldn't we not suffer in some way like him? I just find it interesting. And I'm not the only one that has that has this stuff. I'm I'm finding it very interesting that where all my pain is is right there, which would, would have been where they put the spike. Is down here, which is that nerve, which would have been pulled and activated. He'd had a pain all of his arms, my knees from supporting him, him supporting his weight, uh, my one foot. I'm starting to think more and more. Maybe they tied his feet together and hammered the nail through one foot instead of two. But that one foot I have right where that divot is, right where that gap is to go through the bones to the heel, is where the pain is. Um, and ba and lower back, of course, you know, hanging on the cross like that, your lower back's going to hurt because your body's all twisted. You can't get comfortable. Breathing issues. Breathing issues that are undifferentiated. They cannot find out why I have breathing issues. I've done these methacholine challenges. I've done five methacholine challenges. They can't find anything. It's weird. But that could be a way. It's worth studying. Don't take my word for it. 1 Peter 5.10, after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. So even though we're going through stuff like this, we see glory on the other side. He's watching over us. And what we're going through here, it literally is nothing to eternity. Colossians 3.4, when Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So we're waiting for that. We're waiting for him to come. People are still fighting against pre trib rapture. You know what? It doesn't matter. Just believe in Christ. Philippians 3.10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. See, that stuff's interesting. And when I think about it, and I'm not trying to self-glorify, and I don't want anybody else to get that idea uh, to do that with themselves, to, to glorify themselves, but think, you can think about that. And you think that, why do I have the pains where I have them? What have I done in my life that situated that? And I think a lot of people have the same testimony I have. When I gave of myself and put my life on the line, it was a result of doing that. That's where I have this stuff from. I don't know. It's really something to look into, and it's definitely something to be prayerful about. And let the Lord show you these things. Because like I said, I was given this revelation as I was driving down the road, and it, it I was having a conversation with somebody about something different, but it, it kind of hinted at this. And while I was thinking about it, and a couple of scriptures popped into my head, then this revelation came to me, and I was like, wow, really? And I went into prayer, and I was like, is that what that is? And it built on that. Ephesians 1 7 in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace Amen, and thank you for that Second Corinthians 1 5 for as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too Did you see that for as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings I mean, a lot can be read into the, these statements, but look how many times it refers to it. Look how many times it mentions it. What was Paul's thorn in his side? That Jesus said, my grace is sufficient. Romans 5, 3 through 5. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that the suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. Hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. All them people that tell you if you get the Holy Spirit, everything should be perfect now. You're not sick. You're not injured. You should be healed instantly. You should be able to fight demons right off the bat instantly. First off, you're 100% accurate on all your interpretations of the Bible. 
Obviously, they got it wrong. Because what I read is, we're going to suffer. But that if you're going through that, that's a good thing. Acts 14.22, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying that through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. Is he talking about the tribulation? No. There's tribulations and there is the tribulation. Which is a, which is a two-part tribulation. The second half is called the Great Tribulation. The first half is the Tribulation. The whole thing is considered the Tribulation. And saying that through many tribulations we must enter the Kingdom of God. I mean, it makes sense to me. Maybe I'm the only one seeing this. John 16, 33, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. So even though we're going through the things that we're going through, even though we're uh, enduring what we're enduring here on YouTube and possibly about to lose all that, could it be that he's allowing us to be shut down to give us rest? We've done what we can do. It's time to stop. I don't know, guys. I know one thing. I know whatever happens will come out on top on the other end of it. John 15, 20. I've had this scripture thrown at me so many times. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. Also, what should be attached to that is if they didn't keep my word then they, they won't keep yours either. <laughs> but see, I have a lot of people that have thrown that scripture at me. And they, th they threw it at me, trying to cast doubt on me and trying to make it look like um, I'm not going through what they think should be the proper type of suffering uh, to uh, honor Christ. I don't think we have to push it. I think it'll happen all by itself. There's no reason for us to create a situation where we end up in suffering but then again these people don't know what I've gone through and they don't know what you've gone through they don't know what we've endured in our personal lives or everything you know this is very specific and this is also a very personal thing Matthew 5 11 through 12 blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and other all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account How many people, when we go against the uh, the others and tell them, um, you know, this is incorrect, uh, this is what the scripture says, that's not right, you're adding law, uh, you, you're, you're stepping outside of what the Bible actually says, is that speaking evil of them? But yet when they come here, uh, uh, Mr. Christian, I corrected you. Uh, Mr. Christian, you don't know what you're talking about. You need to read your scriptures more. You don't understand. You're not saved. You're not going to the rapture. You're destined for hell. I isn't that speaking evil? I've never told somebody they're going to hell. So when these things happen, rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now to me, that right there, that should be a hint to go and look at how the prophets were persecuted and go and read about them and look at all the things they went through. Not, not a lot of the prophets were beaten or anything like that. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. They talked a lot of smack. Some of them got roughed up, but they, they just mainly, because they were afraid to touch prophets back then, they just talked a lot of smack. They didn't catch beatings or anything like that, yet they suffered. What do you think? Do you think maybe that's what this is? It could be. It very well could be. 1 Peter 4, 13, But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. And what are we looking for right now? But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad 
when his glory is revealed. Why are we going to be glad? Well, first of all, we get to see him. He's going to be coming for us. But then we get to get out of all this pain and suffering. I had somebody ask me that. They thought they were testing me. And they asked me, so what is your reason for wanting to escape? Is it to, or, or to love Christ? Is it to get out of going to hell or is it to be with Christ? I said, well, I want to be with Christ. But I don't want to go to hell either. I mean, let's be honest. I don't want to go to hell. But I love my Christ, and I want to be in heaven with him. I've told him on several occasions, you can keep your crowns and your rewards. I just want to be there with you. First Peter 4, 12, Beloved, do not be surprised. Do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. So we know this stuff's going to happen. There, there should, be, should not be a surprise to any of us of what's going on. Um... 1 Peter 4, 1 through, 1 through 19. Okay. Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, so as to live for the rest of time in the flesh, no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. For the first... Or for the time that is past suffices for doing what the Gentiles want to do, living in sensuality, passions, drunkenness, orgies, drinking parties, and lawless idolatry. With respect to this, they are surprised when you do not join them in the same flood of debauchery, and they malign you. But they will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. That is extremely interesting passages. Since therefore... Christ suffered in the flesh. Arm So Jesus suffered, the, the fleshly suffering. Arm yourselves with the same way of thinking. For whoever, ah, come on. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. So as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. That's interesting. To me, that is very interesting. I have to read 1 Peter 4 all the way through again. But see, when I see stuff like that, again, when I see stuff like that, that, tell, that, that leads me to think, if we're in Him and we're supposed to suffer to Him, why am I not being whipped? Why am I not being beaten? Because there's different kinds of suffering. We're being persecuted. People are talking about all of us on other channels. Um, we're being attacked. Unprovoked. Um, and then this physical, these physical pains in the places where, ironically, in the places where he would have had pain on the cross. I'm just pointing out what I'm, my observance is. I'm just pointing out what I'm seeing. But there's a whole lot of scripture that backs it up. A bunch of scripture that backs it up. Uh, we did 4.1. Uh, 1 Peter 3.17. For it is better to suffer for doing good than that should be God's will. If that should be God's will, than for doing evil. And are we doing good on here by trying to share the proof with people? 1 Peter 2.21. For to this you have been called. Because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. So, for to this you have been called. We've been called to suffer. Because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. So we should f suffer also. Suffer for our brethren. Suffer for our fellow man. Suffer for Christ. Because in doing that, we suffer for Christ. So, this all could be all part of that, which would make sense. I've had hands laid on me a bunch of times. I've witnessed healings happen from the laying on of hands. I was a part of one. I've done it twice, personally, and witnessed the healing. Yet mine wasn't taken away. Many of you have this same testimony. And you've prayed for the healing. I've, I've given that testimony, prayed and prayed for it. It won't happen. 
maybe there's a reason why. And a lot of people have told me, well, what are you doing wrong? Well, maybe you're not tithing enough. <laughs> maybe you're not doing this or doing that. Mm, I don't think that's what it is. Just pointing out. Just pointing things out. Let's see. Uh, 1 Peter 1, 6-7. In this you rejoice. Though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, which we can relate to that, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Guys, that's talking about the rapture. That's talking about us and what we're enduring and going through. Your pain and your suffering may be because God doesn't God doesn't do things like we think He does things. The Bible talks about that. He doesn't see the same way we do, and He doesn't uh, address things the same way we would address them. And it may have nothing to do with what you've done wrong or anything like that. I mean, my sins have been forgiven. At this point, it's chastisement and reproof. But is it lifelong chastisement and reproof? Or is this suffering for Christ? All I'm saying is, if you've got pain right here, and that's where they, it's very obvious, that's where they put the uh, spikes and other pains throughout your body. And that's where he had his pain at. When you really think about it and imagine it, that's where he had his pain at. Makes sense. To me it does. I don't know. James 4.4. 4, I gave this one to somebody the other day uh, that was talking about, oh, you need to have a good life. You need this. You need that. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is, is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Have you become a hermit or a homebody since being saved? Hebrews 12, 7 through 11, it is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom the father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Would this not also be counted as the same thing as suffering for Christ? Discipline? Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the fathers of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time, as it seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness. This is preparing us for the kingdom. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So now, going through these scriptures, we know what this is. We know what this is meant to achieve. Since we know that, since we have that knowledge and understanding, should it not give us a different perspective on these things and why we go through it? Should we not deal with it and push on? Should we not have faith and give thanks for him reproving us? Thanks, give thanks for him for, for deeming us worthy to suffer? Now it gives you a different perspective when you read stuff like that because you know what it's meant to do, what it's meant to instill in us. 2 Timothy 4, 7-8, I'm going to close with this one. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. So, is it wrong to align yourself with Christ to escape pain and suffering for eternity and escape hell. A lot of people say, yeah, well, you, you're all, your motives are, are wrong. But in that attempt or in that effort to do that, we start to gain the knowledge of what really this means and what this really represents. And our driving force then changes to love for him because our understanding grows as to what this is and what's being saved or what we're being saved from what we're being saved to. Now our driving force may have been to escape, which there's nothing wrong with that, 
But now we understand what this all means. We understand the whys. If you're suffering, you're not alone. The, uh, was it Keegan Fernandez says it all the time. If you're suffering, you're not alone. We're all suffering. Every one of us has something that we're fighting and we're dealing with. And just in these scriptures that I've showed you, and you can see there's more. There's a lot more. It is very evident that the stuff that we're going through, the physical pain that we're enduring, whether it was because of something we did or didn't do, or whatever disease or whatever, is meant to correct us and glorify us and prepare us for the coming kingdom. Look into this more, guys. Check out these scriptures I gave you. Look into this deeper. Check this out more. Do your own studies on this because what will happen is you're looking for answers. I'm merely leading you to the door. You're looking for answers for why you're going through this. And if you read through these diligently studying this, looking for the answers in prayer, your spirit within you will show you this and it'll help you comfort you and get you through what you must endure. Because guys, after this, no more pain, no more nothing. I love you guys very much. I care about you guys. We're gonna go we're gonna make it through this, no problem. Don't be scared, don't be fearful, just stay strong. And we will endure until the end. And we'll all get to see each other when we stand in heaven. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.